Hey, welcome back to Freedom Algo. Today was a pretty wild day on the ES. So there were quite a few setups today, uh, but not as many as you'd expect with the type of action that we actually had today. There was a little bit lower volume. And unfortunately, some of the big swings just didn't give you the setup that would have been ideal. So I'm actually going to talk about those, though. I'm going to talk about some of the swings and how there was a possible setup that was forming, but it just didn't trigger on my chart, but it might have triggered on yours. So I'm going to go over that quite a bit here. And so let's just get into it right now. So let's start over here. Zoom in a bit so that you can see this. And so what we actually had here was a down channel working in the overnight. Now, there was a couple ways to look at this. You could have looked at this as a wider down channel, which I did, but I also had a short-term down channel that played out. So there's a short-term downtrend here, and it gets a break, close outside, and then it gets one swing down, pull back, second swing down, and gives you a new low. Now, I obviously wasn't trading in this overnight, um, but there's a pretty decent, there's a couple of decent setups here. I'm not going to, I'm just going to mark this just to show it. There's actually a pretty decent setup right here. Uh, and what this is, is that you, you come down here, you get a close outside of the short term down channel and you get a pullback first entry short, pullback second entry short on this candle, but it's not a good signal bar, but then you get a lower high here. So that's a lower high within the second, right after the second entry short swing hasn't played out yet you're expecting a new low so if you were trading which i don't <laughs> that's two in the morning my time that's actually a pretty sweet setup i'm just going to mark it just to just for educational purposes all right so then here you kind of confirm this wider downtrend channel uh you kind of have touches along there touches along here you don't quite touch it here but that's okay um and then basically you come down and this is at this is before I started trading as well. You make a new low here. You make a first entry short there. And then I came in today somewhere in this area. I think it was like right around here. And I was waiting for a second entry short and you just never got one. You basically had this first attempt lower right there. And then you just never get a second entry short until all the way up here. Um, so some people might argue that there's a trade here. I don't like this setup though, because it's a two bar matching high. There's stem on the bottom of both of these. So this thing could very easily start to come down and immediately go up and actually make a proper new high. You could end up, because it's a break of the channel, and so you could end up with another swing up before it makes the new high. So I just didn't like this. If there was a really bearish bar set up here that maybe broke higher and then gave me a really bearish reversal bar, I might have taken it, but just didn't really get a good setup there, unfortunately. So no trade there on the second entry. You don't really get a proper lower high because then I was thinking after this, okay, maybe we get a lower high. We do get one right here, but it's just too bullish of a bar. If that was another bearish lower high, again, I would have taken that short, but there just wasn't a setup there. So even though it played out the way I expected and it did pull back, it ended up not giving you a setup. Now you end up turning into a range here, uh, right around this dotted line, which is the open. We had this gap up here, which is the close. So you're expecting us to fill the gap at some point. So even though I was thinking bearish, like we, I wanted to get down to these lows, I knew that we'd probably fill the gap first. So I was very aware of how close we were to it. And so I only took this short here because I like this one. So basically what you get here, uh, and this one is basically, you have this, so you're, you're trending sideways, you have this down channel, you get this close outside that's a matching low on this green bar. So some people would argue that this down channel had played out. But to me, I like to see a new low. Sometimes if it's a two bar matching low, it can be questionable. But also we're still kind of rangy here. There's no real long setup here. If this, if this green bar had closed a tick or two lower and then reversed, I might've actually taken a long there and tried to ride it up to these highs, but just didn't get a nice setup there. I just saw this as, you know, we could easily come down and actually make a new low and then reverse and give us the, the range trade. So we get this uptrend, channel plays out pretty much perfectly. Now I like this one because you got a double bottom here. So you look at this as a first entry short pullback and it traps all the longs. It goes, it, it opens here, goes one tick higher and then immediately reverses and gives you this really bearish bar. So you could wait for this one to close and see this as basically a failed breakout. At the time, you would have probably had your range high at this high and it closes perfectly at the level. 
let's see. So kind of like that. You would have had your range high probably drawn off those highs. And so then you would have seen this as we're closing right back on it. Break below that, it's probably going back into the range as a failed breakout. So it's kind of a failed breakout and it's a second entry short. There's an argument to be made that you could enter this one on the engulfing bar as a trap too, one tick below this bar. And if you did that, I wouldn't be too upset. The only problem is you got stem on both sides, so it's not a perfect setup to do that. However, if you saw it as a nice trap there on the trapping all these longs, it's a possibility. I just didn't like it because then you would be actually going short before the range top and it could tap the range high, which was the, these candles highs. And then it could give you a breakout pullback that actually goes long. So I didn't like taking it on the engulfing bar. Um, there's a couple reasons that it would be too risky. But once this thing closed, that was a nice, easy trade, easy scalp. You don't, you don't get a big trade there, but you get an easy scalp. Uh, and then, and you don't really get a big run or anything. It probably, like right here. So if you look here, one tick below that bar, it comes back and taps you here. So if it filled you there and pulled back, it, it stops out your runner, depending on how you played it. But yeah, I wouldn't be looking for a runner here anyway, because I'm expecting we're going to go up here. So it was really just a quick scalp. So then from here, you get this trade, which is pretty decent. Um, because at this point now, when I saw this thing come down and start to reverse, I was thinking, okay, maybe the range is higher. So I, I moved my range up to these highs just in case. And the midline was fitting pretty nice right there off of these tops. Uh, I mean, this is slightly like that. You can see the, the midline fitting off those highs right there. And the midline just fits really nice, even all the way over here. So I like that. I liked it up here after this move. And so then what I saw was a pullback, a first entry. So this is the low. So it, it gives you a first entry long here that then comes all the way up, taps the range high, pulls back here, traps all these shorts who try to go short on this bar thinking, oh, this is a, they, they were probably thinking, hey, this is a lower high. It looks like a bearish bar. However, your work that the, you're above the EMA, you're going to have to short right into the EMA if you try to short that. And even though this is kind of a range and the EMA is getting sideways, you still have to respect the fact that the EMA has been holding relatively decently there and there. And so we might tap it and just reverse, which is exactly what happens. It goes like two ticks or something, I think. Let's see, the low is 590175. Yeah, so it goes two ticks down and then reverses and traps all these shorts. And so for me, this is a possible second entry long. You can see it here, pullback, first entry, pullback, second entry long after this bar closes. And you know, th th there's some risk here because you're, you're taking a second entry long right into that range high. You're close to the high of the day. Now this one would have been, that's why it's green. There's a couple reasons not to like it. You don't have room to the high really. However, you're expecting that you're probably going to fill the gap. And that ends up being the move that kind of leads to the gap fill. Now, you don't get a runner here, most likely, if you're in this trade. I think the high there is, what is that, 0550? Yeah, so you get filled on this candle and it comes back and stops out your runner and then it goes to the high, which, you know, whatever. At least you get your scalp. So, not bad. Uh, this is a break of this short term up channel. It moves up to a new high. And then what I like here is that this up channel, so now this up channel's played out. These down channels haven't really played out yet. So you're, you didn't get a new low on this channel. You didn't really get a new low on that channel. And you definitely didn't get a new low on the bigger channel. But now you filled the gap. So I love this trade here. This one is a lower high that taps the close from the, from the, the previous day. So we fill the gap, pull back, get a first entry long that really just acts as a lower high. And it basically gives you this big bearish bar. It's pretty big, 14 tick bar compared to some of these other bars. However, it closes here. I don't love that it closes at the top of the EMA and it taps this um, range high. However, I think that in this case, you're expecting that the range high is here and there's a possibility at the time there's a possibility at the time that the range high might have been like this because that was the high right there. It kind of fits with the with that close and that open. And if that's the case, it did fill and it did fit pretty well in there. That midline is somewhat questionable though. So there's a couple reasons to be a little leery of it, but I still think this is a red. I think this is a good candle to take. 
And also there's a, you know, you could kind of look at this as, you know, this is the, the, the trend has played out and this is the lower high. So I like that one and you end up getting a nice short on that one. And, um, and then it pulls down. I think this one actually stopped my runner, but it was okay because I got another entry right here. And so what you end up with is you start to form a tight channel off of this lower high. Now you wouldn't have had this exactly confirmed at the time. You, you would have maybe had this, you would have had the trend line drawn, but it wasn't exactly confirmed. And I would have been working off this short term one. And what I was looking at here was a first entry, second entry long failure with a nice doji, bearish doji. And it's just, it's closing. It's, it's looking like you're going to get an entry below this midline. You got room to the bottom of the range and to the open there that are kind of lining up pretty close with each other. So I like that one as a nice short. I took that one and it was, it was pretty solid. I will tell you when I took this one, I had my stop market order one tick below this bar. And for some reason, the way it filled, it actually filled me like, this doesn't almost never happens. Typically when I put my stop market order one tick below a bar like that, I get filled right at the price. Uh, but this time in particular, it filled me like two or three ticks below, which kind of was annoying. I ended up getting my fill for my four ticks, but it, it messed me up with the trade a little bit because then it like filled me somewhere down here, didn't fill me there, pulled back, it ended up filling me down here. And I still did catch a runner, but it was a little bit um, funky and I was, I was kind of caught off guard for a second, but it did work out. You do get the runner there, but then you're bouncing right here. So I end up just um, moving my stop up and I, I think I followed this one down. I closed it somewhere down here. I forget exactly where. Um, I think what I did was I closed it after this bar because it started to break higher and it just looked a little bit too bullish, even though that's a doji. I was thinking, hey, maybe this is a failed breakout and it's going to come back in. So I think I closed the trade somewhere in this move. I think it might have been on this candle. All right. Anyway, so that that plays out. And basically what you end up with, and this is another one that was really unfortunate because you get a first entry, second entry short, but the signal bar is just too bullish. So I really wanted to take a short down here, but I just didn't get a good setup. And you're still kind of in this short term uptrend. You didn't tap this. I was really hoping that this would go first entry, come back, tap the range and give me a breakout pullback short with a second entry short combined. And then I would be able to take that, but it just didn't play out that way. So unfortunate, but it happens. Um, now we're thinking there's this possible trend here. So I'm going to show you here. We break, we break out of the range. We keep going. So you come down. Um, there is a, from this high, a first entry, second entry long, but I'm not taking longs here. Uh, I'm just not. That's just not a good move in my opinion. So even though there's a second entry long there, it, there's just no reason to take a trade there. Um, but down here, I, so now I drew this channel from this high, coming through and then tapping this close once this thing closed. And you could argue that this is a failed second entry long right here, but it's just, I, I wasn't, this was only confirming right there. So I wasn't taking a trade there. Now, what I did look for was a lower high, but we just didn't get one. Unfortunately, we didn't get one here. I was hoping that we'd get a little lower high, like after this candle, maybe we'd come down, give us a lower high, confirm the trend line on a lower high, and I was going to take it, but we just didn't get one. So um, you could maybe put the argument out there that there is the failed second entry long below this bar, but I'm just not, I'm not super into that. You're not back to the EMA. You're just confirming this trend line here, and it's not really that convincing yet. This one already played out, so you got to wonder if failed breakout is going to favor here after a bullish move like this. And so I didn't love that. I'm going to mark it just in case you had a better signal bar set up. Maybe you got a lower high. I didn't get one. Okay, so then it comes down. You come here, and I this one was tempting as a, just a first entry short uh, with the trap there. So when I saw this one play out and it came up, and it gave you sort of this move where it, this candle then opens, you get this one tick higher that fails. I almost took this as a trap. I'm actually going to mark this as a green. It, it's aggressive because it's a first entry short, but it's kind of a trap. And there's a couple of reasons to like that as a trap to the short side. If you're conf it's confirming this trend line here, it ends up just giving a scalp anyway. And then this thing finally breaks. Now, this is a little bit of a better setup here. What you end up with is a first entry, second entry short that fails. 
but but it's also so this one is kind of funky it's a, there's a lot of traps right here so you got a pullback first entry short pullback second entry short one tick that fails but you got a first entry long this is a pullback second entry long that fails at the double top right off the EMA and so the reason I like this is that if this trend line was valid you're expecting a, a new low on this move here and at this point you already made the new low on this channel, so that's another thing you got to be weary of. You already did make the new low there. However, if this tr trend line, if this channel plays out, you're probably expecting a new low at least here. And so you end up getting it. I marked it green only because the fact that that ends up being a double top, so it's a first entry, second entry long. That's a double top, so it it almost you almost could say that it's a second entry long that sort of succeeded. I wouldn't say it succeeded though. It's a double top there. It's bearish candle. It's a bearish candle. You know, it's bearish move. So there's some reasons to like that, but it's aggressive. Uh, the better move is to wait for the lower high and you end up getting it here. And it ends up being actually a pretty decent little trap. So this one is way more advanced, but it's a safe trade for me. And what I would call this one, it's kind of like a first entry, second entry, that one failed. So then you come up. Now, if you look at this as sort of a double bottom, you could count this as a first entry, second entry short off of these lows, still expecting possibly a new low. But also what this one ends up being is a pullback, right, down here, first entry long. So this candle closed there, so this one opens, it goes up one tick, comes back and stops all these people out that are, so this one, <laughs> this is just classic, classic traps here. I had to laugh a little bit because just all these like one tick little traps like right there, right here, the one earlier. I mean, this is just gnarly stuff when you get when you see these. So this one ends up being a first entry long. Then everybody comes it comes down, it stops out all the people who got short too early down here, right? A bunch of people shorted probably a bunch of people were trying to short here. They all get stopped out on this candle. So it's kind of like all these longs that tried to go long here, they get stopped out real quick. So all these people try to go long, it goes up one tick, fails, stops them all out, right? All the longs at this point just get stopped on that because they probably had their stop losses right there at the lows of these candles. Then it comes back immediately, it closes here. And now what is interesting here is the, the longs try to get long again, they get stopped again on one tick. So it's basically a pullback, first entry long, comes up, closes, Second entry long failure. Uh, it's, this is real. It's really advanced the way that that plays out. But I see this. That's kind of how I saw this one as like a basically a pullback first entry long, and then this is now a new low all in this candle, and then a close here. So another break above this one ends up being the second entry long that fails. It's really advanced, but that is a decent trap. It can. It's confirming right off this trend line. I think that's a really safe trade. It's probably going to shoot down, and that is a nice. Nice setup. You you get a, a nice runner on that one. You're going for the measured move here. I had the measured move drawn. Measured move this high to this low, and then measured off of that high to see where we would go. And we end up getting a perfect measured move. Uh, this one came out perfectly. I called this one out in Discord, and uh, I had this all I had this pre-drawn to show where the measured move was, and then boom, tapped it exactly. Comes up. Now it just, it keeps going lower. There's almost like a, uh, this move itself almost has its own sort of trend line working. Something like this. It almost has its own channel, like within a channel um, that is going down. But I don't take any, I didn't take any trades off of it. I just kind of let that thing roll. And then you end up with this short term little up channel working and it comes and breaks this bigger channel that we were looking at before. So now, you know, off of these breaks here, this short-term channel, you didn't really need to draw it. I'm just drawing it for illustration purposes to show that sometimes these moves create their own little micro channel like this. And so now what you're expecting here with the break of this and the break of this wider channel, if it's in play, is a possible new low. And you get it right here. So it ends up coming down. You don't really get a good trade here. Uh, unfortunately, you get a first entry, second entry short, but it's just not a good candle. It's within the uptrend. So then I'm like, okay, maybe we get a lower high here after that second entry short. But you just don't really get one till right here, but that was too bullish for me. So again, you couldn't take that one, unfortunately. 
Maybe you had a better candle on your chart that you could have taken, but I just didn't have one. Then it comes down, and then you end up with this uptrend working. And that new low has, has happened. So at this point, you're thinking, all right, we're coming up. We could range, you know, we're getting into the lower volume of the day here. You zoom out, you kind of, you had the new low here. Everything has played out. Measured move has played out. So now you're thinking, you know, there's a couple things to look at. You could take a fib from the top to the bottom, and you could see that we haven't made a 50% retracement yet on the low from the, the current setup. So possibly come up here, maybe towards the 618. Maybe we come all the way back up. Who knows? Uh, if you measure from the overnight high on the FIB, it's a, that was the 382 right there. You don't have the 50%. So it's possible that we end up just getting stuck here. It could go lower. There's still a gap down at 5831 that we haven't filled. So it's possible that we go down there. So basically all that I saw from here in this up channel, at this point, you're so bearish. And I like this as just a tra another trap. This one is a green because you're within an up channel. So this is risky. But what you have here is a first entry, second entry short that's also a trap. So the way this one worked was um, in real time, the thing closed here with a bearish looking candle. So you could set your stop one tick below it. But what ended up actually happening was this candle opened up. It went up. It went one tick above this. Everyone got long and then they all got trapped and it came down and immediately filled. And that would have given you just a really fast scalp that went down and immediately reverses. So it's just a real quick trap scalp short. And so I really did like that one. Um, but it's it's more advanced. And it's, it's green because it's within an up channel. So that's aggressive. That's very aggressive. But it's been pretty bearish. So it's a possibility. Even though we made the new low, it's a possibility that it's going to go uh, down again. Or at least range sideways or something. So uh, that's why I like that one. And also the other thing about it is if you look at this high, it's kind of near these tops here. So it's a possibility that we're going to come back to the EMA, which is what we did. All right, then it comes up. You don't really get much more trade setups here. This thing goes up. You end up getting this trade. Now this one, I actually did take this trade in real time and I'm only marking it as a green because of just um, how it got a little sideways. I did take this long though and I did get my scalp but I didn't get a runner. I just got my scalp on it on four ticks. So basically you get this new high, pull back, first entry long, pull back. Now this is why it's green because it's a first entry long pull back. It's kind of like a hidden second entry long right here that fails. And then it gives you this one. So it's really a first entry long, second entry long. However, there's a hidden second entry in this candle here. It's a little more advanced, but this is like a swing on a lower time frame that would have made a tick higher and then failed and trapped all these people. So all these longs right here got trapped. They got immediately stopped out for a tick and then it ends up coming over, going down. So it stops out all the longs, then it gives you the long, but it only goes, I think, exactly four ticks. So let's see, I think you get... Yeah, there's only there's only five ticks in there. So I got in and it it filled me on that wick right there. And so if you were going, usually you need it to tick through your order. So that one is the that one is a aggressive. It's questionable. There's a little bit of sideways action here. If you saw the hidden second entry, then it, it's kind of like it already played out and failed. So it's a little risky. I only liked it because they had this up channel working. And I'm thinking, hey, maybe we actually make a new high on this up channel before we reverse. We end up not doing that and just going sideways. And basically what we have now is we've formed a range. So this trade did work out for me, but it was, um, it was not ideal in that way. So I wanted to call that out. And now it looks like we've got a possible range here. It might even actually be something like this. Um, oops. So you kind of have though that that's part of a different move i think you could kind of look at it as a possible range that looks like this um alternatively if you go from this low to this high you don't really know for sure what's going to be confirmed yet so if you draw if you, you could draw it also like this as a wider range and that one is actually somewhat valid because you can see these taps of these wicks Perfect close there, or perfect tap there, perfect tap there. However, the closes are up here. 
So what I would do, sometimes when I'm in a, doing this, what I'll do is I'll just draw both as possibilities because you don't really have any touches on the high side here. Um, so it even could be that the range is something more like this off of that close, and this is a failed breakout. So there's a possibility there, but you don't know for sure. So what I'll do sometimes is draw it like this. So I'm kind of watching where the closes are, and then you kind of monitor it. But I wouldn't be taking really much trades in here yet, because at this point, you're kind of expecting a new high on that up channel. At the same time, we were pretty bearish, and there is still that gap below us. So anything could happen here, and you got to be careful. There's not really much else that needs to play out. This up channel, I guess, could give you this and give you a failed breakout or keep continuing. There's, a, there's possibilities there. Um, but I would say it's kind of 50-50 in here, whether it tries to go lower or higher. So I would be staying out for now, and I'm done for the day anyway. Video ended up going way longer than I expected. I just wanted to talk about some of these and how sometimes you get days like this where there's some, you know where the movement's going to go, but you just don't get the best signal bars and stuff. Like again, this one back here, that first entry, second entry short, but it's just not a good signal bar setup, and you don't really get a good lower high. Really unfortunate when that kind of stuff happens, but it happens. And so you just got to know that. Um, all right, I'm done here. I'll see everybody tomorrow. Peace out, fam.